hey guys welcome back to another video in spring boot series so in this video I want to talk about how can we integrate uh, swagger uh, in our API and swagger will allow us to um, have an API documentation for our service so for example what we have right now is a, is a controller that serves a, a two resources a get resource and a post resource for videos so you can see right now um, I have a get videos and a, a post video so in this video we are going to take a look how we can uh, have this uh, web page up and running in our service alright so let's head back to the code base still the same code base we and this is going to be very simple implementation so f first and foremost we are going to need a swagger dependency so I'm just going to add a swagger dependency and it comes from uh, Spring Fox. It's called Spring Fox, and I think there is a Spring Boot plugin for that. So we have a Spring Fox Boot Starter. We're going to select that, and the group ID is io. Spring Fox. That's good, and we'll take the latest version. Uh, I'm just clicking Maven Auto Import, so we get that uh, internally. Uh, so once we have the dependency, we can. The next step for us is to create a, a config file for Swagger. So we'll go new and create a Java class named Swagger config. All right. We'll add it to Git, and then so just for, so that uh, uh, Spring Boot knows it's a it's a component and scan it. We'll call it a config. We'll annotate that file with a configuration annotation right and then we'll say enable swagger2 all right and then we'll create uh, this guy public docket api we'll create this method and this is all uh, you know just required for for swagger right so it's a separate config while sitting separately you know we don't need to uh, change that once once it's done so we'll say public docket api let's import public docket so docket is there and then we'll say we'll just return a docket object to that and we'll say what do we want to return we want to say we are creating a documentation type alright what kind of documentation is that it's a swagger2 documentation right and we want to uh, generate documentation for all the requests for now right so we'll do select uh, all the paths so path is basically you know forward slash videos and forward slash video slash something right so I'm gonna do everything for now just to keep it simple dot any right and I think that's that's good for now I think this should do it right so we just created a simple uh, method that returns a docket object with a, with with a documentation type of swagger for every path in the in the service right so that's good we have the dependency i think that should do it uh, at this point i'm just going to restart the service stop and rerun and the, when when the service comes back up we, i'm going to hit the web browser and going to you know provide a special endpoint that will enable not enable that will show the swagger documentation right so it's going to look like this but let's let's do that in a separate window 8080 okay now I'm gonna go to swagger UI so you can see at localhost 8080 forward slash swagger hyphen UI is what you need to launch on your web browser and then you can see there are we, you can see both the controllers which uh, contains the endpoints right um, basic error control is provided you know by swagger for us we haven't implemented that yet but we have implemented this guy right so let's see what we have inside that we have a get request and a post request which we have implemented and just to make sure we still have that I mean we have that this way showing up but get mapping for videos and a post mapping for videos right that's why it's showing up there so get videos it's saying you can uh, that's how get request looks like it it needs a title um, you know a title is a string so you can provide a title 
right and the response is going to look like this the the reason it is very important that now once you enable that you can give that to to you know, other developers who can look into your API and say okay uh, you know the get request is going to look like this and they should expect a response in this format so that's why API documentation is very important right and the other good thing about Swagger is you can actually try it out so you hit on try it out button um, so since we know the title is optional right uh, so we can directly uh, execute that and when we do that we get an empty response because there is nothing in the database yet right so let's let's go to post and enter something in the database I'm gonna hit try it out and let's say title is uh, chapter 1 and description is introduction right and we'll do execute you'll see 200 okay came back in the response that's good right and now let's go back to get and see if what we have inside our database so get executed very quickly and you can see 200 came back with with title uh, chapter 1 and introduction 1 we were doing the exact same thing using postman in earlier videos but now we can also utilize swagger right but more than just trying out the api endpoints the great part is you can actually see the uh, the request format and a response all right so let's let's do a quick recap what we did we added a spring fox boot starter dependency and it's 3.0.0 version the version is very important because if you go to a previous version your swagger uh, endpoint url on the browser will look very different so make sure you have you know the right version and then we uh, we created a new file called swagger config we annotated that file and we just using all the path to create the documentation right very plain and simple we restarted our server and we went to uh, 8080 swagger hyphen ui and again there is there is also a very important endpoint you if you i think if you have a swagger hyphen ui you don't have forward slash then it won't you won't see the end result right so make sure you have a forward slash as well and you will see everything right so i think this is for this video thanks a lot guys for tuning in stay tuned for more updates like this